Hello everybody, welcome to Challenge to Build. My name is Paul Michael and in today's video, I will be working on the frame of this 1959 Chevy Viking 60, we like to call Mater. So if you've been following along in the build process of this, we just got done installing the seats and the steering column for this truck. And I want to continue with the momentum that we're having on this build. And I'm going to pick the next target item on the list. And that is going to be number 10. Well, the other frame exhaust pass through, which coming back over to the driver's side of the truck. You can see down here that there's a five inch piece of quarter wall steel pipe going through the frame and what's going to be happening here is i'm going to be running my four inch exhaust pipe through here i was originally going to run stacks on this truck but because of the mid 50s cab is designed with that slant right there when you run the stack up there's a lot of distance in between the stack and the cab and it just kind of looked kind of funny so what my plan is going to be i'm going to run dual four inch tips on either side of the truck and then baloney cut them on an angle and have them just dump out right here. I'm gonna put a, a filler piece in this area here with probably some nice trim pieces or something like that. Still kind of in the works. I kind of build and design as I go along, but that's what the focus of today is. First order of business is gonna be taking the bed off of the truck, getting that out of here. So with some quick camera magic, Okay, now that the bed's off, we can get you a closer look at exactly what we're gonna be doing today. The entire frame was custom built by myself. When I originally bought this truck, this truck had a eight lug C30 independent front suspension, and then had a small chunk of two by six rectangle tubing grafted to the rear section of whatever this rear end came out of. I think it was a 3500 HD. So it was piecemealed together quite a bit. When I had originally bought this truck, I was going to put an LS motor in under the hood. So I can tell you that there is not an LS motor under the hood. Actually, that motor is sitting right over there. So now with the motor that's sitting under this hood, the independent suspension wasn't gonna work. So that's why I had to opt for the solid front I-beam uh, axle in the front so all that to say it had a lot of work to go into the design of this and I realized that the frame that was underneath the truck was not going to be the best avenue to go down so I completely scrapped the entire frame that was under the truck and proceeded to build a brand new frame with the similar design that it had just all new steel um, the original frame had like a Z notch in it to accommodate for the drop that the truck had. All the frame is custom built. All of the four link suspension was built by myself. It's got full airbag suspension, front and rear. The brackets I bought off of Amazon and just customized them to fit my application. All of the Heim joints came from Barnes four wheel drive. Again, Amazon. I am a sucker for Amazon just because of how easy it is with the one click buy. Today is the pass through exhaust we are going to duplicate this pass-through exhaust on the passenger side so this is kind of how i had the suspension mocked in this wasn't even strong enough for me anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out these two gussets we're going to add the pipe in and then box everything in uh, as what you saw on the other side so we're going to set up and get to work
right, so now that we got the, the piece of pipe cut for the pass-through, what we gotta do is come over here and use the radius of the pipe to trace it in this area here. I'm gonna cut this piece out so that way it sits up nice and tight inside the frame rail here. Take the grinder, grind off some of the plate steel and some of the weld that's still here from me cutting the plates off. Once I get this radius traced and cut out, we can install the pipe, tack it in and get everything welded up and then start working on boxing this area in here. So I'm getting set up to trace and cut out for the pipe, but I figured I'd take a second and show you guys what I'm doing. I took a piece of one inch square tubing and put it in the center of the driver side pipe and clamped it. So this way here on this side, I can get the pipe in the same plane as on the other side. So clamped it to the driver side, put this one in, clamped it to the passenger side here and now what it allows me to do is the pipes are in the same plane so this way here when I run the exhaust through I won't have an issue lining everything up and uh, allows me to have hands-free tracing for the pipe so get this traced out I'll get this out of the way and we're gonna cut this out and get it welded in Alright, so now I got everything cleaned up, ground smooth, I'm pretty happy with the way it fits. Just so you guys know, you can cut a radius with an angle grinder. You don't need a plasma cutter to do it. It doesn't look the prettiest, but it can be done. I want you guys to know that you guys can accomplish this kind of build with limited hand tools. I don't have... A big shop my shop is a 28 by 32 I just got it recently built um, a little over a year ago there is no power in this shop I do have a welder and my basic cutting tool is my angle grinder so I am building this project with just basic hand tools uh, in my garage that right there is really the only cutting piece of equipment I have in my garage at the moment I've been using a cutoff wheel and an angle grinder for years as far as the cutoff wheels I found these benchmark abrasive these are five inch wheels that is a four and a half inch grinder so if you are using anything bigger than a four and a half inch wheel that means the shield is going to be removed so be very careful I don't recommend it but that's what I do so these are five inch wheels I'll have them linked in the description below through the Amazon affiliates my welder it's a Lincoln 210 MP. As I said before, I don't have any power in my garage big enough to run the welder. So as you can see right there, I run it off of a generator. I've been doing that for years as well. It's been working fantastic. So now that I got my piece set up, mocked up, cleaned up and ready to weld, we're going to get welded in and then we're going to focus in on boxing this portion of the frame in to match the other side.
So if you do any kind of fabrication, welding, building, whatever you want to call it, you got to have a pile of cardboard laying around somewhere. It's a great way to template out anything that you need to cut out without trying to mess up. It's way easier to replace a piece of cardboard than a piece of steel and cut a piece of cardboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and measure so it looks like I got about four and a half. By approximately 11 piece that I'm gonna need. I think what we'll do is we'll come over here, measure out what I got going on on this side. Four and a half. Yeah, by 11. So I finished cutting and cleaning the piece. I had to radius the curve a little bit and take off the point. But now that I got it cleaned up and ground down a little bit, this bad boy fits pretty good. At the top of the uh, plate, I did bevel it a little bit so that way I could get a little bit more of a weld in there. Now it's time to uh, get her welded in. Right, even though this is a uh, pretty heavy steel and there's a lot of surface area going on here you still want to move around quite a bit because welding the heavy steel at least with this it still will heat and warp and so you want to spread the heat evenly around the panel that you're welding this way here you won't distort anything too bad it's not as critical as if you were welding like light sheet metal but you still, with how long you're welding in one area, you definitely want to kind of rotate around to spread the heat around evenly. All right, let me grab this exhaust pipe. Now we got a fully welded in exhaust pass through. I am super stoked at the progress we are making on this truck in the last couple of weeks. So here's the idea with the exhaust pipe. What's gonna happen is the exhaust pipe will come through it like this and I will have two exhaust tips like I said earlier in the video out this way baloney cut on an angle but this way here it gives me a place to put my exhaust pipe through all the while strengthening this area of the frame because this is a, a high 
stress point with this Z frame that we have going on here and then with the rear four link suspension in here so this all needs to be super strong so this all ties it together super pumped you know what that means we can come over here right behind us grab this marker come over into number 10 and it's very difficult to do this when holding the camera let's see here Number 10, weld other frame exhaust pass through off of the list. Sweet. I think the next thing that we will tackle is going to be this one, 22 and 24. We're gonna do the rear axle brackets and the bump stops along with doing some more frame welding and cross members and all kinds of good stuff. So if you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. Also subscribe to this channel so that way you can stay up to date on this build. My name is Paul Michael. Remember, get out there, challenge the build. I'll see you in the next video.